Because it is free, because it seems to be fashionable. Hmm? Social media, the internet provides everyone the possibility to express themselves, and sometimes it's easier to say banalities or to say to repeat, to re-forward, to copy-paste hate speech and speech that denigrates other people and that attacks other people's dignity, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. Hate speech, in fact, starts when other people's rights are violated, when other people's dignity is violated. That's where hate speech starts. In the case of Twitter, also the case of Facebook, for example, uh, with for the, the images, videos that somehow either justified or promoted even violence against women have been mostly determined by concerns of commercial nature. That is, they would lose advertisers if they will not remove that content. And this is for us, it, it's a good example, but it's not enough. Because we would prefer to have in first in the first place a human rights concern and the concern of transparency. That is, uh, you know, when, when some people report on this, the first answer that they used to get is that, yes, but it's not possible because, you know, it's not in our policy. And then you realize that actually when their advertisers tell them, sorry, take us out from here, then their policy can change. And this is, this is where it makes it very blurred sometimes. Where is the commitment? Where is the policy? And where is the concern also for the users? young people within the Advisory Council on Youth, which is a, a common, a, a, common a, a joint committee of youth organizations in the Council of Europe, that have had the idea of claiming the internet also is a space for human rights. That's where it started, out of personal experience but also out of concerns, motivated by the need to promote human rights online too. And this has been taken up by the organization, by the Secretary General, by the Joint Council on Youth, and ultimately by our member states and governments. This has been extremely, uh, let's say, encouraging to see a kind of a snowball effect, where it started small and it's growing. I'm proud to say that we have the campaign either running or being actively initiated in 38 member states. So it's, it's easier now to we tell which countries are not involved than the ones, than the ones that are involved. That's extremely useful. That's extremely good. We also have a network of 70, maybe more, uh, online activists who have been working voluntarily to support the campaign and to make the campaign happen.